Welcome to this week's Maryland's Missing and the Murdered. Maryland's Missing and the Murdered is a weekly YouTube channel that covers the topic of missing and murdered individuals in the state of Maryland. This week I am covering the murders of the Bishop family in Bethesda, Maryland. William Bradford Bishop was born in 1936. He was an extremely intelligent man graduating from Yale University in 1959 with a degree in history. He also had a degree in international studies from the University of California. He married his wife Annette the same year as graduating from Yale. He enlisted in the army the same year as marrying Annette. He could speak Serbo-Croatian, Italian, French, and Spanish. He was working in the military and living abroad in Italy. Bishop then began working for the U.S. State Department with a goal to become an ambassador by the age of 50. In June 1971, he was assigned to Botswana in the Bureau of African Affairs. His widowed mother, Lobelia, joined the family in Botswana in 1972. The family returned to the U.S. in 1974 and bought a home in Bethesda, Maryland. At this point, the Bishop family had three sons, Jeffrey, Brenton, and William Jr. At this point, Bishop's mother, Lobelia, was handling a lot of the child-rearing duties with taking kids to school and different sports while Annette enrolled at the University of Maryland. Bishop was against her going to college as he wanted her to be a stay-at-home mother. In 1976, Bishop wanted more than just a desk job at the State Department. He wanted a diplomatic post in another country and was waiting to hear if he was to get that promotion. Problems at home increased as the family was being audited by the IRS. Also, Annette was hoping that her husband did not get the post in another country because she was happy being in college and did not want to leave the U.S. again. Bishop was also under a psychiatrist's care and was on a medication for anxiety. On March 1, 1976, Bishop went to work and found out that he did not get the job promotion he wanted. He was very upset by that, so he told his supervisor he was taking a few days off. He left his office and took $400 out of an ATM around 2 p.m. Later in the afternoon, he bought a can of gas and went to Sears to buy a hammer. He also went to a hardware store and bought a shovel and a pitchfork. He went home and killed Annette by hitting her in the head with a hammer. He then killed his mother, Labelia, and their three sons. He took the bodies, wrapped in blankets and towels, and put them in their station wagon. He left the area and drove to Columbia, North Carolina and dug a hole in the forest. He put his family in the hole and then set them on fire. A fire ranger noticed the fire and went to investigate. The ranger found the family deceased, gas can, shovel, and pitchfork. Authorities were unable to identify the family at first. They noticed that there was a price tag on the shovel and traced it to the hardware store in Bethesda, Maryland. On March the 8th, the bishop's neighbor reported the family missing due to them not being seen. The police went to the bishop's house and found the blood in the house and driveway. They also found bloody fingerprints in the bathroom belonging to William Bradford Bishop. The station wagon was discovered on March 18th, abandoned on a campground in Elkmont, Tennessee. We're at Jake's Creek Trailhead. A popular trail in the Great Smoky Mountains. The car was pulled in right here. Police say Bradford Bishop dumped his car here. 74 Chevrolet station wagon. In 1976. Oh, that's me right there. Dwight McCarter was part of a massive weeks-long search for the accused killer. One of the rangers noticed the car, and he thought that maybe it was a backpacker. They run the plate, and turned out that guy was wanted by the FBI. And then it turned into a rather large search here. Just people squeezed in 
everywhere. This is Bishop's beautiful family. You know, you would have thought that they were the perfect family. They seem to be very happy. They would go to the beach, they'd go skiing. Montgomery County Sheriff Darren Popkin has been haunted by the murders since he was a teenager. So I was 14. I had some friends that lived literally right down the street from them. Bishop was a U.S. Foreign Service officer. He'd been in military intelligence, aspired to be an ambassador. Deeply ambitious, investigators say he had been passed over for promotion and was struggling financially. And he wanted to portray this perfect family that was kind of carefree, had lots of money, and actually they were running out of money. Investigators say Bishop told his boss he was sick, went to the Sears at Montgomery Mall, bought a sledgehammer and a gas can, filled up the station wagon, got a shovel and pitchfork, went home, and killed his wife, three sons, and his mother. He took the, the hammer that he had bought and beat her over the head and killed her in, a, in just a uh, terrible, terrible, horrendous way. The, the boys were already in their pajamas. They were all in bed. He went room by room and beat them to death one by one. Well, he was my best friend. The blood pattern will show you that he goes back to the front of the house. It was then he killed his own mother. Police say Bishop spared the family dog, piling Leo into the station wagon with the five bodies. I just know that I was babysitting for another family that lived here where the rust um, trim is on the house. WUSA 9 executive producer Samara Martin Ewing grew up in the neighborhood. I saw a station wagon creeping out of the driveway, like really, really slow. That's what really got my attention with no headlights on at first. Police say Bishop drove south to North Carolina, dumped the bodies in a grave he had dug and set them on fire. Then he drove into the Great Smoky Mountains near the Tennessee, North Carolina state line and vanished. William Bradford Bishop Jr., a man wanted for murdering his wife, three sons, and his mother. Is he was on the FBI most wanted list for years. To be able to take a hammer to your children's heads and faces while they're sleeping, I think, really exhibits the brutality of the crime. There have been credible sightings in Italy, Sweden, and Switzerland, but every lead has turned up dry. I think he's gone. I think he finally realized what he'd done, and he came here and he couldn't get no peace. The sheriff says he will keep looking. They are just a beautiful family and that's really what continues to drive me on every time I see their, their beautiful faces. He will not quit until he's convinced Bishop is dead. In Bethesda, Bruce Lashan, WUSA 9. Bishop would be 83 now. You're looking at a bust created by the FBI. This is what Bishop might have looked like a few years ago. If you have any idea where he is, dial 1-800. William Bradford Bishop was charged with five counts of murder, but he was nowhere to be found. He was placed on the most wanted FBI fugitive list on April 10, 2014. There was alleged sightings of him in Belgium, Netherlands, Spain, London, Italy, Germany, Switzerland, and Greece. In 1978, he was seen in Sweden by a former co-worker of his. In 1979, a former co-worker spotted him in Italy. In 1994, a former neighbor spotted him in Switzerland. On June 27, 2018, the FBI removed him from the most wanted list to make room for a, quote, dangerous fugitive, end quote, because at that point, Bishop was 81 years old. If you have any information on where William Bradford Bishop could be, contact FBI at 1-800-CALL-FBI. Thank you for joining me this week. If there is a Maryland missing or murdered case that you would like to see on this channel, email me at marylandsmissing at gmail.com. Music is by Silent Vengeance. Sources will be listed in the outro. Please like and subscribe. Click the bell so you will be notified when the next cases are released. I will see you again next week. Be kind to one another. You never know what will happen tomorrow.